So hey, and welcome to our permaculture garden. This is our second, yeah, it's our second season here since we uh, established this garden here in our forest. So it's all the latest buzz, right? Permaculture gardening. Maybe you've heard it can help you achieve more yield with less work, or perhaps you're hearing that even though your food might be organic, it doesn't mean it's been grown for maximum nutrition. So how do you ensure that your vegetables are nutrient dense uh, with bigger yields and less time in the garden? And what is a permaculture garden anyway? So I'm gonna lay out the five best ways you can transition to a permaculture style garden. But first, you know, why should you care about growing gardens? What's the big deal? Really, a permaculture garden is about taking back control of our health food sources, plant medicines, and well-being in general. You know, in our, in our own garden, we can grow food that we know has no toxic inputs. Our well-tended gardens can grow food that is high in quality and loaded with more vitamins and minerals than traditionally grown organic foods. And what do I mean by this? You see, a carrot isn't just a carrot. And it... <laughs> If the soil in which a carrot was grown lacks nutrients, minerals, amino acids, phytonutrients, well, it's pretty easy to guess that the carrot will lack all of those components as well. And the whole point of vegetables, the vitamins, minerals, nutritional value, are what our body needs to be healthy, right? And there's a, a simple tool called a BRICS indicator. This tool measures the sugar density in a plant that can indicate the overall nutrition of a plant, or it's at least our modern science's best guess as to indicating the overall nutritional value of a, of a particular plant. Now, with this BRICS indicator, the lower the number, the less available nutrients in the carrot, for example. The higher the reading indicates a healthier plant, the greater nutritional value, longer shelf life, um, resists pests naturally in the environment. So you get the idea. I don't know about you, but if I'm eating my vegetables, I want to be sure that uh, all the good stuff my wa body wants and needs is in those vegetables. So in our permaculture garden, all the practices, they, they combine together to bring the most conducive growing conditions for our plants to be as healthy and as full of nutritional value as possible. Simply put, you know, it's, it's a method of garden, gardening that works in alignment with nature, not against it. This means that the permaculture garden, in the permaculture garden, we want to recognize and stop destructive processes such as chemical fertilizers and spraying pesticides that reduce the health of our, our food, pollute the environment that supports us. But beyond that, it's a series of techniques to promote the plant's well-being and in turn, our well-being. All right, so let's dive in, right? The top five ways to transition to a permaculture garden. Number one is use compost and compost tea. Now, if you're buying any fertilizer or pest control, you need to ensure that it's not a byproduct of the petroleum industry. These products, they kill soil life, they destroy soil, pollute the watersheds, and more. It's not good. Instead, we want to turn to organic solutions. Now, organic solutions include especially uh, large amounts of compost as the main source of food for your plants. All right, compost is the main source of food for your plants. Adding compost from different sources too, like uh, vegetable-based compost and manure-based compost ensures that soil is being recharged with the nutrients, of a variety of nutrients and minerals that the plants need and soil life need. So in addition to you know, feeding, you wanna feed the roots of these plants, we can also use compost teas as foliar sprays on the leaves or in the root zones. Here, plants uptake the nutrients, strengthen their immune systems, thereby creating stronger, tastier, pest-resistant plants. Healthier food, and fewer pests. Sounds like the old saying, um, an ounce of prevention, yeah, an ounce of, <laughs> an ounce of prevention yields a pound of cure. That's the right one, right? Makes sense? So number two, uh, use uh, low-till or no-till gardening. 
Now, I'll admit that it may take time to get a garden to a place where it's a true no-till garden, perhaps several seasons even. Now, especially if you are just starting a new garden, you will likely have to till to break a capped soil surface. But after that, that initial tilling, your goal is to move towards no-till or low-till gardening. Low-till means we're, we're not putting mechanized uh, tilling equipment deep into the soil, right? Instead, we're using shallow tilling methods like hand tools, uh, a broad fork, which is a gentle method for breaking apart the surface of the soil. No-till means no additional input from you, even just a little bit, right? The soil is kept in a state that is workable, enabling you to just plant, right? Dig by hand, plant. Soil that's exposed to the elements, the sun, the wind, the rain, it'll become capped and hardened. That's the quickest way to destroy soil, is leaving it bare. These attributes are not conducive to a productive garden. So moving towards a low or no-till garden is to utilize practices like uh, deep mulching the beds with materials like straw or wood chips. Deep mulch means several inches or more if possible. If you can get six inches in a bed, fantastic. A little one inch layer doesn't do much. So that leads me into the third thing, mulch, mulch, mulch. To further discuss this mulching thing, right? Uh, think of bare soil as similar to an open wound on your body, right? That wound, it needs to be protected. And so does bare soil. Deep mulching, it suppresses weeds. It exponentially increases water retention, therefore reducing water use. Um, allows for microbial decomposition to take place, which feeds the plants. Reduces or removes the need to till and builds soil. Now, it's not to say that mulch is perfect, but the soil building attributes can outweigh the inherent problems. You know, yes, it can be a habitat for some annoying pests, but the thing about pests is in the garden, they seek out weak and unhealthy plants. This means that the presence of pests in your garden likely indicates that you need to focus on building healthier soils, which mulching can address, right? And number four in the permaculture garden is biodiversity. Natural systems in, so ecosystems are resilient because they are biologically diverse, meaning there are many species of microbes, insects, many different plant species, all commingling to make uh, the most conducive com conditions for life possible. Now, similarly, in the permaculture garden, we can use methods like establishing plant guilds, companion planting, and intermixing crops to mimic natural biodiversity. So to achieve this though, um, the permaculture garden typically looks more like a wild garden than perfectly lined rows of the same plant. You know, so try mixing your corn, your beans, your squash into the same bed, reducing space use by a third right there. You can also intersperse flowers and herbs throughout your beds to attract beneficial insects and pollinators, repel pests, add a pleasant visual diversity to your garden as well as adding biodiversity. Right behind me, you know, is even just a mix of herbs and flowers and kale and things all together right in one bed. And number five, maximizing space. So to really see maximum yield for minimum inputs, Permaculture gardens are about maximizing space, just like nature does. So look at a forest, right? Um, one behind me. Do you see how many plants can exist in a single acre? It's because they're stacked vertically. Have you wondered why weeds are in your garden? It's because the natural um, ecological succession process sees the empty space and it desires to fill it. So most weeds, are actually pioneering species that are bringing quality to the soil, which help the next round of plants flourish and grow. So we, we, we kind of balance what kind of weeding we do here in the garden. There's um, all kind of mullein growing in this garden because it was freshly disturbed when we um, turned it into our garden, right? But that mullein is bringing nutrients down from the ground up into the soil surface, into the leaves, which then 
are falling back down to the soil and decomposing in place. Those tap roots are breaking up the soil for us. So weeds in the perma weeds again in the permaculture garden can be super beneficial. We just got to learn what does what and decide, you know, if we want to keep it or not. Um, so that was a little bit of a tangent, but <laughs> back on to maximizing space. Um, so you want to maximize the space to keep unwanted plants out of your garden. You can plant short crops in between tall crops, which will reduce uh, overall space needs and provide a ground cover that aids in weed suppression. Now, this can be done by looking at how slow or fast a plant grows. For example, you can utilize an open space between cabbages before they grow large by planting quick growing lettuces or other quick growing greens. And in addition to, um, in addition, herbs, um, small trees can be incorporated into the garden uh, to increase biodiversity in the same way. They just act as a placeholder, keeping unwanted plants at bay and filling those niches. All right, so this is just the tip of the iceberg to start tuning your organic garden into a permaculture garden. And after beginning to play with some of these methods, methods you can also dive into practices like composting your own materials to feed your soil and implementation of rainwater harvesting or gravity-fed irrigation systems to further your permaculture homestead ideals. But, you know, again, circling back to it, you know, the whole point why we do this, it's, it's, it's just universal health. Health for us humans, health for our bodies to be clear in our mind and our body and our spirit, and to also work to rejuvenate the environment and find ways to farm, produce agriculture in harmony with nature. So I'll cap it at that. That is it. Five ways to turn your garden into a permaculture garden. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and let me know your thoughts below.